I have two boys, yeah. right? And one day they're gonna watch this. They're not gonna watch it right now, they're 11, yeah. nine, but they're one, they're gonna watch yeah. this, right? Uh, and in school, you know, I'll go and, and the kids that are, you know, 11, 12, 13, they're like, you, you, Andrew Tate, you know, how was that interview? Oh my God. So 11 year old kids are watching these types of content, but yeah. that's pretty wild where they're at. But here's a question about brothers. There's a lot of brothers out there. As a father, there's certain principles I'm teaching them, yeah. okay? One, if you can speak from the idea of how your bond was built based yeah. on a man, yeah. your father, yeah. Emery, yeah. injecting certain values and principles on the two of you. Yeah. You guys better do this. I don't want to see this. Yeah. And then which part of the code did you guys create? Because there's friendship, yeah. but there's brotherhood. There's yeah. a very different story. Absolutely. H how, how was that developed? Yeah, so my father, and I have endless stories about my father. A lot of people who dislike me would call him an extremist. I don't think he was an extremist. I truly believe I had the best father on the planet. And from a very young age, he made it clear. He said, look, you're Tates and you're going to have enemies. You have people who are against you. Your best bet is to be a team. So whenever me and Tristan would fight, which happened, we got put in a room together. And we had to sit in that room. And my dad would say three hours or four hours in silence. He'd sit us down in the room, here, here, looking at each other and say, if I hear a noise, I'm starting the time again. And we'd have to just, imagine you know when you're a kid and you fight and you're furious and you're so mad. And then you end up sitting across from the person you hate. Silent. Because you make a noise, dad gets mad. And dad's outside, right? So just sit there, two hours, don't make a noise. And we'd just stare at each other. And over time we thought, every time dad was home, we just stopped fighting because it wasn't worth it, just sitting in this isolation, weird, silent stare thing. <laughs> Because that's what happened on repeat. It happened like five times and we just stopped fighting. We'd literally, we'd fight all the time when mom was home and when dad would come home, we'd literally just look at each other like truce. Like we can't, we don't want, we don't want to sit and do this thing we had to do. Yeah. So we became a team and then I think it evolved from there because there's always been a hierarchy. I am the older brother, I'm the bigger brother. He does respect me for that. We both have opinions, but you know, it can be, it can be vetoed by me in the end. And we have our specific roles. My specific role is I'm, I'm the one who takes the most action. I'm the one who over worries. I believe, especially in business and many other things, I say it to all my staff. I say react, I said react fast, react early, like panic early, like panic now. I don't believe in waiting for things. It's just not who I am. I can give you a million different examples. If, if, if my email processor, this happened just before my cancellation said, oh, we'll put your account under review. You'll have an answer in 72 hours. As soon as I get that email, within three minutes, I'm like, get a new one, get a new one. I've never waited for anything in my life and it worked. I've never waited and it worked out fine, ever. Every time it's your cancel, every time it's your deleted, every time so I'm like, no, get a new one now, get, just get a new one. I need today's email out, get a new one. We can't get a new one, no one will accept us, build one. So in a day we build our own. Like I'm the panic fast and early guy. Tristan's the complete opposite and that makes us a, a perfect synergy and I, I super need him and I need his energy. Especially in jail, man, he was fantastic in jail. He was like, Andrew, I'm like, what? He goes, if when you were 18, they told you you could be one of the richest, most famous men on earth, with street cred in every single city that knows how to speak English. All you had to do was sit in jail for two months. Would you have taken it? He's like, yeah. He goes, and what the fuck do you care for? It's like, true. No, we're taking that. He goes, and he used to say that, what kind of man hasn't been to jail? That's what he's saying. He used to say, what kind of man hasn't been to jail? He loved jail. He was loving it all the time. He goes, what kind of man hasn't been to jail? Of course I'm in the jail. I'm just a jail. Of course I'm in jail. Like he didn't care. And his energy was amazing to tap into. But. We both understand that we, neither of us could be us without the other one's polar. And that's why we live together. That's why we'll always live together. I've had a lot of like, women try and say, why do you still live with your brother? Why don't you want to live with me? Da, da, da. And I try and explain to them that, one, I don't think I can be my most competitive without him. Two, I'm most emotionally stable with him. I like the idea. I'm most competitive with him. I'm, I, I'm my best version of me. If it doesn't matter if I have to go into a fight, it doesn't matter if I have to run a business, I'm better with Tristan by my side than it would be by myself. And three, my ideal family life, even my ideal family, the way I live my life now, is very much more like a clan than a nuclear family. I like me, my girl, my kids, Tristan, his girl, his kids, my cousin, his girl, his kids. I like this idea of lots of people. I like that. I like that feeling. So a girl says to me, well, you don't want a family. Like, no, I want a family bigger than you want. I just don't want to just sit with you. I want a lot of people around me and I think it's better for that and I think it's better for the children especially also. I think they enjoy it more. But yeah, I've got the best brother on the planet. I truly do. And um, this is why I'm saying some of our best days of our lives are in jail. I was going to ask you that. You guys live here in this compound. It's an amazing place. I was going to ask you, you kind of just answered it, but you foresee yourself living with your brother the rest of your life? A thousand percent. A thousand percent. I can't imagine not wanting to live with Tristan.
If you want privacy, you have privacy, right? We have a big house. So yeah, it is what it is. On one wing, yeah, it, is, on the other it wing. is what it is. But I can't imagine him not being around. If there's a problem, I just shout his name or I just can't imagine it. And, and I know I'm my best self. Also, there's the overall, the overall male competition, the masculine competition that exists between us and between all men. So we live currently here. We've got me, my brother, my brother's personal trainers here. We've got camera guys here. We've got war room guys here. We've got loads of guys here, but I can give you a million examples. There was a record set next story of a gym and there's a stair machine and there was a record set of 188 floors within a time frame. I came along and smashed it with 198. I only held the record for 45 minutes because someone beat it with 202. As soon as the record's beaten, everyone gets pissed off and puts their trainers on, puts their shoes on. As soon as it's beaten, everyone gets mad. Who beat it? Who beat it? And everyone goes and did it. And, and that's how you push yourself to the level you never thought you'd be able to push yourself. 202? 202 floors in 30 minutes. <laughs> Good luck. 202 no, no, 30 minutes. No, he, that's what that was beaten with. Now it's 222. Then beaten again. I don't know if I'll ever get to that. But I, I'm still 198. I've got to try again. But the point is, when you have men around you, there's that natural masculine competition. And that's mm -hmm. what drives you. If you're going to be the best version of yourself, even if you're a boxer training for a fight, you train with a team. You train with other that's boxers. True. You train with other boxers or other trainers. If you're a football, if you're on a football team, you're pushed by your team. I think life should be the same, right? If imagine you took the normal average man and you moved him into a house of five people, and you had a philosopher and a fitness expert and a hypnotist, whatever it was. These will be. That will make him a more competitive person overall because he's trying to compete with all the other people who are on his level. You don't want to take bitch position. So I, I don't like the idea of my life without masculine competition. That's what I'll always say to my brother. And if you met a girl one day who says, Tate, I want to have, have your babies live with you, but it's kind of weird that your brother's here, what would you say to her? Yeah, a few of them have said that. I offer some degree of compromise. I'm like, look, we can have our own house separate if you really want, but I'm going to be spending a lot of time at that other house, including nights over. I want to stay with where my brother is. So you wouldn't compromise is. a little bit, but he's going to be living next door or with you. 100%. One of and I two. don't think, and that may be unusual in the Western world. I don't think that's unusual in many places. I love that, by the way. Well, you talk Just about so this you, all the time. Oh, you don't even know yeah. how much I love that. Yeah, I love that. To me, as a kid, that was a dream. Like, if you could, you know, write next to each other, uh, live next, there's a family in our community a uh, billionaire family. They live right next to each other. The, the oldest son has the biggest house, 12,000 square feet. Then the youngest son has the second biggest house, 8,000 square feet. And the parents live in a 6,000 square foot house right next to Absolutely. each other. Absolutely. Okay? The two boys have four kids. The eight kids are always together. Absolutely. What a great environment. Absolutely. It's a dream environment. Absolutely. I, I, I can't see how a person wouldn't buy into that, the benefits of it. And, and, and there's also benefits to the relationship. Because I, I think you have a better relationship with your woman if she can go and talk with other women and be with women and I'm with guys and, and then you're together sometimes and you can split it up. It's better for everybody. This whole idea of, the, of, of just man, woman, boom, child bang, I understand where it's come from. I'm not saying it's all typically bad, but I do think that in those scenarios, there's a lot of men who are particularly miserable, particularly men especially. And the idea of a clan and having that team around you, I love that. I wouldn't live any other way. I love living that way. Well, being born and raised in Miami, there's a lot of Latin culture there. Yep. And you know, the American friends, they just move out, move on their own, that's what they do. But in Latin culture, the abuela's living in the house, the family's living in there, the, the, the women are all kind of well, congregated we could, yeah, together. We could also it's a different world. We can also discuss it financially, right? If, if, if you're a man and a woman and you have three boys and they're, let's say, traditional Western, whatever, they all go and pay three different rents and they all move in with their girlfriends and everyone's getting wrecked, right? If you all mm -hmm. stay together and combine your income, you also do much better financially. This is how a lot of immigrants even survived, especially Muslim immigrants in England. I've heard you tell the story about Absolutely. Yeah, they all stay together in one big house. They all pool their incomes. You have a bunch of people with average jobs and Ferraris on the drive. And then they buy the house they're in. Then they buy another. You pool the incomes. If you all split and separate and just spread out, you're just paying all different rents, all different electricity bills, and you just go broke. You have to think of the last name and the generation and the clan as a whole. So yeah, I love the idea of living with my brother. I'll never live without him. And it, yeah, his woman can move in, of course. His kids can be around me, of course. I'm uncle, why not? I, I have no problem with that.